Maybe your aerial is way easier than your front flip. Now if that's the case, then this method of learning Webster might work way better for you. And if you're scared of the other method, you don't have something soft to land on, this way is a lot less scary. It goes without saying that you should already be able to do an easy aerial that you can land every single time. By aerial, I mean a tricker aerial, a side to side aerial. Before you try and turn your aerial into a Webster, try and do an aerial landing on the exact same spot. So you can use anything for a marker for this. It could be a twig or a leaf or a patch on the ground that's a slightly different color. Anything, literally anything that's just gonna act as a marker so that you know you're landing on the same spot. Now, if you can do a spin step aerial and still land on pretty much the same spot, then your aerial is probably good enough to turn into a Webster. As the less travel you have in your aerial, the easier it's gonna be to turn it into a Webster. Make sure for every aerial you do, you're driving your leg backwards as hard as you can and you're pushing your hips backwards at the same time. You don't wanna just be kicking the leg. Make sure your hips are working too, as this is gonna be super important for your Webster. Let's start by going all the way back to the cartwheel to build up through baby steps so that we can avoid fear completely. So first we're going to do this little tucked cartwheel where you turn your hips 90 degrees at the end so you land like you would in a Webster. Try to time your turn so that when the first hand comes off the floor that's when you turn your hips and you keep the second hand down. So you land with one hand down on both feet in this little crab position. If you can, try to stand up afterwards. That's obviously a bonus as it will get you used to keeping momentum through the whole move so you're not just stopping dead. Once you've got that nice and comfortable, we're just gonna do an extended cartwheel and tuck in at the end to land in that exact same position. Make sure you keep your eyes on the floor all the way through so you know exactly where you are. We're gonna keep this same spot through all of our progressions, so it's best that you build these good habits now. So for our next drill, we're gonna take away the hands, but we're also gonna take away the flip. This drill's gonna help you to understand what this should feel like in the air. So start with your legs in the same position they would be for an aerial or a butterfly kick and try to swing your arms across your body in the exact same way that you would for a B kick but you're not going to dip, you're not going to drop your head down and lift it up you're just going to keep your head up the whole time so there's going to be no flip involved Allow your back leg to come up backwards behind you and quickly turn your hips to land in this position Try to do this landing one leg at a time and also try to do this landing on two feet facing this direction. Getting comfortable with this is really gonna help you turn your aerial into a Webster. So if you've got all those previous steps down, well, now it's time to combine them. We're gonna create our Webster. Think back to those aerials that you were doing trying to stay on the same spot and not traveling. You wanna apply that same technique when turning your aerial into a Webster. The less you travel, the easier it's gonna be. So you're going to take off just like your aerial, but after you leave the ground, and it's critical that you do this after you leave the ground, don't try and do this straight away, or you might go off into something else that you don't want to be doing. So after you leave the ground, you're going to turn your hips 90 degrees to land in that same position you've been training. Now you've worked on this from your vertical drills, you've worked on this from your cartwheel drills, so you should have a good idea of what you're doing here. If you're a bit scared trying the first one, you don't feel like you're going to get round, you don't have anything soft to chuck it onto, then try and do this super slowly and put your hand down at the end to help support you. You don't want to be dropping onto your hand, you want this to be a really slow, controlled movement. You know exactly what's going on the whole time. That's what's going to keep you safe. Once you've got that nice and comfortable, try and do it without the hand. You should be able to see the floor the whole time and it should feel very similar to your drills. So practice this motion as much as you can. If you're a left side twister and you do this the same way as me, try and spot to the right hand side of your body all the way through this movement. And if you go to the right, then you're gonna be spotting to the left side of your body. The more you drill it, the easier it's gonna to be to start to extend out your body and keep your legs straighter throughout. Also, try to push your hips forwards at the end. That's gonna make it much easier to land. Now, once you practice this a bit, you'll probably start to recognize this movement. 
learn yourself a Webster, get an aerial semi for free. So for step two, we're gonna start to turn this into a real Webster. Now there's not too much to change, you're not very far off. If you can do this step and you can do it comfortably, you're not gonna have any problems getting a Webster. Just make sure you can really do it comfortably as you don't wanna be changing things too soon or you might end up doing a front flip to your butt. As if your mind shifts and stops thinking about it as just making changes to the same drill and starts thinking about a front flip, then it's gonna get way harder. So make sure you don't change anything too major. You should still be thinking about this as the exact same move, just with a tiny little detail added in. And that first detail we're gonna change is what you do with your chin. So instead of spotting the ground the whole way through, you're gonna do the same motion with your arms, same thing with your legs, same thing with your hips, just as you take off, try and pull your chin into your chest and think about doing a front flip. That's gonna help you to really go over your head. After you've got that, it should be really taking shape. So for step three, we're just gonna make the final adjustments so it is a legit Webster. It's not a weird Webster from an aerial takeoff. The first thing you're gonna do is change the foot positioning. Instead of standing how you would for an aerial, we're gonna turn so both feet are facing the direction we're traveling before we take off. To start with, try to perform the same arm motion. So arms coming up over your shoulder, swinging diagonally downwards and forwards before pulling in. Now the arm on the plant leg side should pull in first. If you just watch this motion, you can see that as my back leg's coming up, then the arm on the plant leg side is pulling in and grabbing behind my hamstring. That's just gonna help me get into a tighter tucked position and rotate faster. The other arm stays out in front for a bit longer to keep you in a nice stretched out position so that when you do pull it in, you're gonna accelerate as going from a straight position to a tucked position is gonna make you flip round really fast. After performing this with the new foot positioning, then the only thing left to change, the only piece of our aerial we've kept is the arm motion. So you're gonna change it a little bit. It's not gonna be too different, just instead of your arms swinging at a diagonal downwards, you're gonna swing them straight out forwards in front of you. So the arm on the plant leg side will come out first and swing down, grabbing onto the plant leg. The other arm will stay out a little bit longer before pulling in as you take off. So it should feel very similar. Try not to overthink it. Try and think about doing your aerial arms, just doing them forwards instead of diagonally, as you want it to feel familiar. Every step of the way, you wanna feel like you know what's going on. Like you're not even trying a new move. You're just making a tiny change to a move you can already do. And once you've done that, you've learned a Webster. Now all that's left to do is practice it. Try and take a couple of steps into it. This might feel a bit strange at first, but when you get comfortable with it, it's gonna be even easier than your standing one. And over time, you'll be able to just run up into it. Try and do it from a spin step slash momentum step, as that'll be really easy as well, though that'll probably work a little bit better for your aerial semi. But just try to play with it and get really comfortable with it, as that's gonna really help when you move on to doing losers and Axe Webster's which we're gonna get onto later in the video. To check out the full 40 minute ultimate Webster guide, check out kojostricklab.com. We've also got over 900 other videos on there, including a full feature length tricking film. So check it out, we've got a lot on there, you'll like it.